Today I want to talk about the top eight things I think you need to know, at least to know about when you do Deep Racer. So let's get started. First, you really need to know how gradient descent works. Gradient descent is the algorithm that is the, at the foundation of all machine learning. Uh, you really need to know this. So I did a quick, look, just type in gradient descent into your favorite search browser, a search engine, and, uh, you know, just get to know it. So the first thing that pops up for me is this article from Towards Data Science. And when I go look at it, it's a great article. It gives you the high level introduction of what it is, right? So I want to focus on a couple of quick things here. Uh, the function uh, requirements include that the function needs to be differentiable, differentiable and convex, right? So you need to be able to find the local minimum or maximum essentially, right? So if you have a function that has like these weird uh, discontinuities, it's not going to, it's not going to work. So how does this actually work? It essentially is trying to find this local or local or global minimum or optimum. And it's going to try a point. If it's not quite right, it's going to try a different point until it kind of settles down, right? It's kind of working its way up or down the hill. So again, this is going to explain the math behind it. Uh, and, um, and at the bottom here, it kind of gives you a cool visualization. Let me show you real quick of this thing in action, right? Basically what I was saying before, it's going to keep trying and eventually settle down here. So again, read the article. It's really important to understand how this works uh, because, uh, otherwise you're going to be creating reward functions that, that aren't, you know, aren't optimized and you're going to be wasting your time training. So please understand the algorithm. Number two on the list is understanding what the proximal policy optimization algorithm, what it is, how it works. So this is a great video from YouTuber archive insights explains in depth how it works. I really recommend you take the time to look at this video. Uh, it's, it explains how the reward function works, how the algorithm finds the, the best, um, course of actions to take, how it optimizes for that. So again, I really recommend you take a look at this. Uh, it, it's going to make, um, a big difference in your enjoyment of deep racer. So check it out. The third thing to keep in mind is the importance of a well-behaved reward function. What do I mean by that? Well, let, let me give you an example. So here you see is the reward graph over time for a, a model build of mine. The green line represents the reward value and you can see it's increasing. And the blue line, it represents the percent completion or the average percent completion in for the training. So how many laps were completed on average uh, during training for each iteration? What's important to see is that it's monotonically increasing and it's highly correlated. So what does this mean? This means that my my algorithm, my model is learning to drive and better every time because the reward is highly correlated with successful completion, right? So this is good. So if I keep letting it train, it's going to eventually reach 100% completion, right? This is, this is the kind of shape that you're looking for, monotonically increasing and highly correlated between reward and completion rate. So keep that in mind. Number four, well, you're probably wondering what kind of reward function I should use and what shape should it have? So I really think it's important to think back to your high school math and think about these family of functions or these parent functions, linear, quadratic, cubic, reciprocal exponential all these types of functions right these are different shapes you can use you really want to understand how your reward function is generating the um, or enabling the gradient descent algorithm to find a local maximum or minimum right so quadratic is good linear is good too uh, but something like absolute might be problematic right this is not differentiable so you need to keep that in mind that you may need to uh, move this around or shape it in such a way that over the val the range of values that you're feeding this reward function, that 
the gradient descent algorithm can actually do its job. So refer to this, uh, to this chart here, I think it's super helpful. It helps me, I know it helps me think about different reward function shapes as I, as I build my, my function. Number five in the list is really understand the action space that you're working in, right? Are you doing, uh, are you working the continuous action space or a discrete action space, right? So in a continuous action space, you define the min and max values for steering and speed. What that means is the search space, the, the, the set of all possible actions is huge, right? If you make it this wide, like if you say the minimum speed is from one half to four, this is a huge space to explore, right? So at every step, the, the, um, the deep racer algorithm is going to be trying a different combination of speed and steering angle. So it becomes extremely important to have a well-behaved reward function, but not only that, a continuous reward function. And let me go back to what I said before, right? These are continuous functions here, the quadratic, cubic, right? This helps you shape the reward. A lot of the examples in AWS say if this, if this, have like if then statements, if the speed is less than two or less than whatever, give it a certain value. If it's greater than another value, give it, you know, double that value, whatever it is, right? Like a lot of if then statements that might work if you have uh, discrete, right? If you have a discrete action space, right? That might be better, right? Because there's only, let's say in this example, only five things you could possibly do, right? Uh, actually, in this one is 10 different actions here for discrete. But in the continuous space, the action list is, I wanna say infinite, but it's, it's it is, um, could be thousands, right? Because now you're, you're not looking at a steering angle of 30 degrees. You're looking at steering angles of 29.9999 or 28.756, right? It, there's, I won't say infinite, but there's a nearly infinite number of combinations you can have. So you really have to think about the reward function as a continuous value. Number six on the list for being successful at Deep Racer is you really need to think about training locally right? Training through the console. If you're a student, you're limited to 10 hours. Believe me, the top racers are not doing everything in, in the console. They're doing local training. They're doing, they're using AWS or GCP, Google uh, cloud to, to run this, run this code. And what they're looking at is deep racer for cloud. This is a, a freely available, um, a tool, I guess, uh, that lets you run Deep Racer in a Docker container on your laptop or on your desktop at home or in the cloud or wherever it may be. So you definitely want to check this resource out. It gives you instructions on how to install. Um, and you can do lots of cool stuff, right? You can have multiple workers, you can have multiple GPUs, you can run this on Windows if you want. I don't recommend that, but you can. But believe me, you want to be training locally so you can learn without paying AWS all your money, right? <laughs> you want to save some of your cash. If you have a, a reasonably powerful computer at home, you can definitely do this. Um, check it out. Number seven on the list is log analysis. You really have to check the logs and understand what's happening with your training. So again, there's a free resource called Deep Racer Analysis where you can use these IPython notebooks. You download the your, um, your log file and you run this code and um, let me let me scroll down to the interesting part so it kind of shows you it'll show you the track and then it shows you the training progress right it tells you oh look here's your progress per iteration right how your average time per iteration and there's a whole bunch of views here that are pretty interesting so i really highly recommend you look at this, this you know all the top racers are using this kind of um uh, this kind of notebook and they're customizing it and um, again it's you can use this as a template get started and then customize it to whatever you need so definitely check it out number eight on the list is keep a log of all your experiments right so here you see my descriptions are pretty generic uh, this is not not very helpful but i keep a notebook separately 
that logs every single experiment I've, I've done, what I've tried, what worked, what didn't work. It's a lifesaver, believe me, you want to do something like that. Number nine on the list is cloning doesn't work, at least not for me. So if I look at this uh, experiment here that I cloned, <laughs> my God, what happened here, right? This is all over the place, uh, no, no good. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I find the hyperparameters are real, really difficult to get right, right? You, I end up tweaking this. I mean, this, this probably should be its own item. You know, don't go crazy with the hyperparameters. If you have a bad reward function, the hyperparameters is not gonna, they're not gonna save it. Uh, and then, but talking about cloning, I find it hard. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I find it better to sometimes just start from scratch. I don't know. This is where I get very frustrated, but um, to each their own. Good luck with that one. That's all I have to say. And finally, number 10 here is be curious, ask questions, um, do your research, experiment, be, don't be afraid. I mean, obviously, if you have, if you're doing local training, it's easier to experiment since you're not paying AWS for every single minute of compute. So, you know, keep that in mind. But, um, you know, I really encourage you to be curious, try different things, think it through, you know, think about that Feynman, Richard Feynman approach to solving problems, read the question, think really hard, write down the answer. So same thing here, right? So think about the reward function, graph it out, think about what, how it's going to perform in certain situations, right? Does it make sense what you're trying to do and then code it out, right? It's going to save you a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of computation. Uh, a lot of costs if you think through what you're trying to accomplish. All right, well, that's it. I hope this list was helpful. Uh, my top 10 or top eight, I don't know what it was, top N number of, of uh, tips for anyone starting on a deep racer. Uh, these tips are things that I think about every day, and I hope uh, they're helpful for you. Take care. There you have it, folks. Team Boltron. Stay tuned for more. Make sure to subscribe and click the like button if you want to see more of this content.